Introducing a whole new way to save from Xfinity. Get Xfinity Internet with unlimited data, Wi-Fi equipment, and a free streaming box included with a two-year rate guarantee and no contract. All for just $30 per month when you add an Xfinity mobile plan. Switch today. Close up with Preps KC here as we move through the Crossroads Conference virtual media day and we move on to the newest member of the Crossroads Conference, St. Michael, and uh, bring in Coach Andrew Pitts. And Coach, uh, good move for you guys uh, going into that league. You already playing a few of them already, so it probably yeah. was a pretty pretty easy move, but how exciting is it to be in a conference coming off your best year as a program uh, with a lot of excitement, a lot of momentum, and, and being in a league that's going to do nothing but make you better? Absolutely. I I have a good relationship with the, all the coaches in that, in that league. And, you know, I, I enjoy being in the conference. It gives our players a chance to be familiar with opponents and, and to create some good relationships and then get things like all conference awards and, and, um, you know, have something to strive for like winning a conference championship. That'll be incredibly difficult this year. And I know we have a lot of great <laughs> teams, but just, just to have that kind of, have that kind of commitment from a group of schools to do things together is, is really good. Coming off at seven and four year and went to the district championship game and, um, you lose good players, but you bring some good ones back. What, what's the summer been like for you? Oh, well, summer's been really good. Um, we've had a, a great, great opportunity to get a lot done. We, 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 we've had a number of seven on sevens. We did um, football camps. We do have a, a number of our, our skill guys to replace, you know, both were outside receivers were seniors. Our tight end was a senior. Our quarterback was a senior. Our running back was a senior. Um, but you know, in high school football, that, that happens. You have, <laughs> You have, you have a short window with the players and um, you try to make the most of it. And, I, you know, I think it's good if you have a program that has seniors continually returning and you have old seniors that graduate and, and leave, but then you got new kids coming up. So, and I think we have that this year with a number of excellent players that are going to fill those roles. Is there any uh, one position group or um, side of the ball that's really uh, taken some big strides? Either they needed to and they did it or they yeah. really just kind of surprised you? Well, you know, for, for offense, I think we're, we're very good um, in our skill. Like we replaced a lot of skill positions with seniors, but I think the guys coming in are, are going to be very good at replacing them. So our, our question was with the offensive line. Um, you know, and I've challenged, I've challenged that group to say, hey, our season's probably going to go very much how you guys go. And, and they've really stepped up. We've had a number of kids um, you know, say, hey, I'll play some old line for you that maybe didn't in the past, um, which was nice. And, and they're really working hard. And I, I try to tell them, hey, you need to be five arms of the same octopus. Like, you need to be able to work together. That's kind of the analogy I use sometimes. Uh, I don't know if everybody knows this, but I, I'm a biology teacher in my, in my past. But, um, you know, so, so we're working through all that right now. But I, I will say those guys have really done a great job. And I'm excited to see what our offensive line can do. Um, on the defensive side of the ball, our most experienced group coming back is our linebackers. And we're going to be led by them on our defense. We run a three, four structure mainly. And, and we got four guys that all played last year. Actually, we got about, we got about six guys that played last year at various times because of injury and, and, but you know, people can rotate in. Um, so we're very strong there and I expect great leadership from them. With the summer winding down as, as we recorded, this is the last day of summer on August 8th. What, what kind of the things that you really want to focus on in those three short weeks to get you ready for that Friday night? Well, I think any coach will, will probably say, yeah, you got to use your summers. We, you know, you don't really have um, a whole lot of time. You have 16, essentially 16 practices once August 8th hits before you're going to play your first game. Um, and, and that's not a lot of time. So most of our base stuff, offense, defense, special teams has already been installed. Now it's not to say we're running, you know, at hundred percent efficiency with it or perfect. So, but at this point, really, we're just trying to refine the stuff that we've installed already. Um, that's kind of where we're at. We will, we'll, I do reserve kind of the, 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 the August start of our season for some of our special stuff. Cause most of the summer, I, I usually try to stick with, these are going to be our main plays mm -hmm. on each side of the ball. We do introduce special teams in the summer and we get our kickers, punters, returners, and, and even get our full kickoff units and punt units and things put together. Um, so we can just be ready to roll once August starts at refining making ourselves a little bit more comfortable with all of our stuff. Well, coming off that, you know, you, you guys have been building, you've been getting better each year coming yeah. off that season last year. 
I'm assuming school wide, there's there's a lot of, you know, tough. It's not really necessarily in the summer, but school wide, the last year coming off that season, there's probably a lot of talking, a lot of excitement on that Friday night experience for just the kids and the and the and the parents. I mean, that's a it's a, football is such a front door of a school. It's got it's got everybody excited about 2022. Oh, absolutely, and and and, and you know, in general, I I think about my high school experience when I was younger, and you know, and I think a lot of people share this. There's nothing better than Friday nights <laughs> when you're a high school football player. Um, and I think a lot of our, our, our players and their parents remember that and, and the whole community. You know, it, it is interesting where, you know, fall sports in general, not just football, but any of the fall sports, they kick off the school year. So I think fall sports have, you know, a, a blessing in that where there's a lot of excitement. Um, and, you know, and, 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 and we, we, try to, we try to involve ourselves in the whole SMA community and um, uh, at our school. And, you know, it, it is. It's, it's, it's special. We're, we're excited. Um, you know, I, I tell my, my players, um, don't worry so much about the outcomes, worry about the process. And I'll, you know, echo that to you, you know, I'm not predicting what our record will be. I'm not <laughs> predicting, you know, you know, anybody's stats or, or postseason awards. I, I just try to say, you know, players, all that will take care of itself. If we make sure our process, how we practice, how we prepare is done in the correct way and, and done to the best of our ability. So I'm not trying to get too far ahead or even look in the past at what happened before every year is new and and we're just trying to focus on our process day to day well coach it should be a fantastic season good luck and we appreciate you taking time with us well thanks Dion. i really appreciate all you guys do and uh let us know if we can help you Dion Closo with Preps KC as we move through our media day here in the Crossroads Conference. We're bringing Summit Christian Academy coach Todd Burke and coach another great season again last year. And um, you guys really had a, had a good group of seniors that had, had really rolled through the last few years. And uh, I know you graduated a lot of those guys. What, did, what does this year's team look like? Yeah, uh, yeah, we had a great group of seniors last year that really waited their turn, you know, to play. And, and they were hungry for their season uh, this year. And I think we have the same group, you know, same same type of thing this year. We have a, a smaller group of seniors. We only have seven uh, seniors this year, uh, but they're all, again, you know, kind of waited their turn. Um, we only return like four starters total uh, from last year's team. So uh, there's going to be a lot of hungry young kids uh, <laughs> looking to play. A lot of sophomores are going to be playing. Uh, so we're young, um, but, uh, you know, we've built a culture here of winning and they expect to win. and, and uh, um, that goes a long way when you're preparing for, uh, you know, a season and, and for a team is to know that the expectation of, you know, uh, we expect to win. And so well, hopefully that carries over. Well, uh, you always like competition in the summer, but sometimes when you have some veteran teams, there's there's not right. as much. But I'm assuming this summer there's probably a lot of competition and a lot of learning yeah. and growth. Well, there, our numbers aren't big. So, unfortunately, there's not a ton of competition um, <laughs> for spots just because um, – you know, we're trying to keep our freshmen off the field as far as varsity wise and just let them play JV and develop. Uh, so uh, with our with our seniors at like seven or eight kids and then we only have about four kids in our junior class. You know, our sophomore class is decent size, but 12 for us, that's that's a decent size. Um, you know, we're trying to play as many of those guys one way as possible, mm -hmm. uh, not expecting those guys to play two sides of the ball. So um so, yeah, so not a ton of competition, but they are competing at the positions that they're at when they're going against each other, you know. And, uh, you know, we go over and play at least some at uh, high school in their seven-on-seven uh, -seven league, and we're real competitive there. And, and so we feel like we're going to, you know, we're going to have to work our tails off, but uh, each week, you know, prepare for the test in front of us. But we think we, we're going to be competitive this year. Is there uh, one group or one side of the ball that's taking some big step forward uh, this summer? Yeah, I think our offense has. I think, you know, playing a sophomore quarterback and a, and a couple uh, kids who haven't started for us at receiver, I think they've really shown – they really competed well in our summer activities and, and did a great job uh, learning the offense and um, working hard to, um, you know, just understand the concepts, not only like what you're supposed to do, but just the nuances of, of the routes and the coverages and those kind of things. So I really think they've, they've taken the biggest step forward, um, which, we needed to, we, which we needed to happen. I think our offensive line kind of had young offensive linemen kind of did the same way, same thing. We had a kid transferring from uh, Lone Jack um, that's going to start for us at right guard. 
uh, that's going to be a you know a, a needed a needed addition uh, there, and and he's really picked up the offense well, and is going to bring a lot of leadership and just size to our offensive line that we wouldn't have had had he not shown up. So, well, tell me this: your schedule, you, you lose an improving uh, Bishop Ward out of the conference, but St. Michael steps in. You're already playing them. Yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a that's a good little rivalry that's going on there in yeah. the summit. And uh, yeah, we, but you also yeah. you also had Harrisonville and. Uh, your, your schedule is tough. So your kids are going to have to grow up fast, aren't they? Yeah, they are. We've, we've added Harrisonville and Pleasant Hill to our schedule. We, of course, we played Pleasant Hill the last two years in the district final game. Um, so we kind of know what we're getting there, but, uh, uh, Harrisonville was, a, was an addition we made. We felt like as a growing school, you know, so our seventh, eighth and ninth grade classes are all going to be over a hundred kids. So we're looking to be probably in the low four hundreds in two or three years and probably looking to possibly even move to a bigger, a little bit bigger conference. Um, so we thought we needed to go ahead and start uh, getting our kids prepared for that schedule wise. And, and you know, we were playing in the class three, uh, set, you know, districts the last two years with Oak Grove and, and uh, um, Odessa and all those guys anyway. So we felt like we might as well schedule a couple of games with those guys and kind of let them get a feeling for who we are. And maybe that'll help us maybe enter to a conference agreement maybe down the road. So, um, so we, so Harrisonville will be a tough, really tough challenge. I think it's at Harrisonville. So uh, with their new coach coming in, um, uh, returning back to, you know, kind of bring them back to their days of glory, uh, you know, you never know what we're going to get there. So we'll, we'll have to be prepared and, you know, continue to just get better each week. And just, you know, I think for us this year, you know, uh, we're trying to kind of tamp, tamp down expectations a little bit. We've averaged nine wins a year for five years, which is awesome. Uh, but this is a different group. And, and so we're going to take one game at a time and just focus on that game. And hopefully we can, um, you know, put a great product out on the field. Well, Coach, it should be a fantastic season. Good luck, and we appreciate you taking time with us. Hey, thanks for having us. And uh, all the coverage you give uh, the Kansas City area and especially Summit Christian Academy, we really appreciate it. Thanks. Dion Clisso with Preps KC. We're talking with new University Academy coach Andrew Blakemore. And coach, you were on staff last year with Coach Heffley, and, and he's moved on to an administration role. I know it was tough for him because he he really loved coaching football. And you guys were having a good time and doing good things. Uh, but you take over a program that that last year had one of their be best seasons, and you guys were as dangerous a team as anybody uh, coming down the stretch. And uh, this year, you get the Kaufman uh, School is joining with you. You guys are co-opting with them as well, so you get even a little bit more influx of of players, which may make you a little bit bigger in terms of, of class size, but coming off of last year's success and coming into this year with some new faces uh, from the Kaufman school, how exciting has been this, has this off season been? Oh, it, I mean, I feel like I can't even do it justice. How exciting this is. We, we, my athletic director um, and coach Heffley, we, we have been trying to push for this merger for a while now. There's just been a lot that's had to, <clears throat> obviously be figured out and coordinated in order to make it work seamlessly. But uh, we already are with Kaufman for baseball and soccer. And so um, things have just been so exciting. So great to have the kids over finally, because the, they've been talking to us during baseball season and soccer <laughs> season about how they want football. And so we're just happy to provide the opportunity for more kids in the city to, to, to place this great game. Well, you, you lost some good players off that team, no, no doubt. Uh, you know, Cannon Clark is a great receiver, and uh, you know, so I mean, just an outstanding athlete. And, uh, cool. But you still have some good ones back. What, what, uh, what, what group of, or side of the ball really excites you right now? Yeah, so um, we, you know, we did. We lost Tyrese, Cannon, and Michael. Those guys were great. Um, our wide receivers and quarterback, um, but. You know, and, and, and you really can't replace them. They were huge in the development of raising the standard of this program. Um, but we've got a great, a great back junior, Alonzo Jacobs, um, who, who had some real promise last year. Um, and we're hoping to get him the ball a lot more this year. Um, just with having lost some of our best wide receivers, you know, lean more on the run game. Um, but our quarterback who's stepping in, um, <clears throat> Quentin Jones, he's a he's been on the baseball team and uh, he's just a, an exceptional athlete. Um, he's a pitcher. 
third baseman. So he's already throwing a great ball. Um, and so in, you know, Kaufman's brought us some, some good kids to, re- to try to replace Cannon and Michael with, and uh, you know, they've gotten, they've gotten on, <clears throat> on schedule with us pretty well. And um, on the defensive side, I mean, and offense, I mean, our strength is our offense and defensive line. We've got some big bodies and some kids coming back. Um, Oscar Sauceda, a young man named Caleb Brown, um, Dimitri Oliver. So we've got some kids who who definitely are excited to, to, to do some damage up front. Um, and then just our we have two senior linebackers coming back, Dom Drummer and Terrell Horde, um, two kids who really brought it last year. And so we're just excited to see them continue to grow. So, you know, it's – like every season, you know, you lose great kids and you always find kids who step up to, to try to fill those shoes. So we're excited. Well, this year, your conference changes a little bit. You, you, you lost a very improved Bishop Ward. Yeah. <laughs> They're going independent, but you bring in the St. Michael program uh, that had, that turned the corner last year and had some good wins. When you yeah. look at your schedule, uh, is it, is it going to be a good one for you guys, especially if you happen to move up in class with the new, uh, uh, new pool of talent? Yeah. You know, um, we've always had to play up, you know, as a class one school in the city, we've kind of always had to play up to play local. Um, and so we, we will move up obviously in class, but we're excited to compete with the teams we've always competed with, you know, uh, Summit Christian, Van Horn, Pembroke, Central, you know, teams that we've been playing for years. Um, you know, we're, we're excited to, have them look across the sideline and see a similar looking number of, a number of players. You know, we were usually out there with 25 kids and they would show up with 40 or 50. (laughs) And now we're going to have that. So depth is going to be great for us. Having depth and competition and practice is, is everything. And so, you know, that's, that's something we're really excited about just as a coaching staff and as a program. Well, coach, it should be a fantastic season. Good luck. And I'm sure we'll be talking again soon. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Dion Closo with Preps KC. And as we finish up our Crossroads Conference virtual media day here, we close out because we go alphabetically with Van Horn and Coach Rashad Bird. And Coach, I love your background. First off, uh, that, that new stadium is still still new. I know it's been a couple years now, but uh, finally having a home, home of the Falcons, like it says there. Um, how has your summer been and how excited are you about the upcoming season? Uh, you know, the, the summer been great. The kids are are, are very excited. Um, last year was the year we broke in the stadium and, you know, we did it towards the end of the year. So, you know, the kids are really excited to uh, play home games. Um, they're excited about this upcoming season, the future. Um, they can kind of see some of the writing on the wall. So uh, they're ready to get it going. Today's our last day for summer. Uh, we'll wrap it up today and, you know, everything moving forward is for that first game. Uh, is there any one group this summer that's kind of taken a big step forward for you? Uh, for me, it's our defensive line. Um, we got some really good guys on our defensive line. Um, and for me, it take the pressure off for everyone else um, on the team. Uh, we have a lot of great skill guys on offense. Um, but I, I think anytime you have a really good defensive line, um, it changes the game. And we have a number of four to five, six guys that we can put on our defensive line. Um, that would constantly cause havoc for any team. Offensively, you bring back your quarterback, tailback, receiver. Uh, that's got to make you feel pretty good knowing you've got some experience back there. Yeah, uh, it, it helps a lot. Um, there's not a lot of um, teaching, uh, more so of reteaching, more so of, uh, you know, just perfecting certain skills, certain crafts, um, kind of adding to guys' game offensively. Um, so it, it made the transition into the summer. Um, really great. It also helped with those older guys who coach up freshmen and incoming guys and new guys on the team um, and kind of helped them with their game as well. So, you know, anytime those guys, you know, they take their mental reps, they're teaching young guys. So, you know, they're, they're anytime you can get players to help coach, um, you know, yeah. they know what they're doing. Well, tell me this, your schedule this year, uh, Bishop Ward has been in the conference and, and played where they could because of their schedule last few years. They move out. St. Michael's moves in. 
uh, in the year conference, which strengthens it even more, even though Bishop Ward was pretty good last year. Uh, but then on your non-con, you've got Christman and Truman and your sister schools. And uh, this looks like a schedule to me that really is going to help you guys be ready for the postseason. Yeah. And, and so, and, and that's one of the things that uh, we've been pushing forward to now for the past couple of years um, to make sure we're battle tested towards the end of that, uh, the end of the season. Um, not, you know, I, 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 I never want to take advantage of any game or I, I never want to, uh, talk bad about any opponent, um, but sometimes you can play some stronger teams that can help you get ready. Um, and sometimes you don't. And, and so we're trying to move towards that way. Um, you know, if you want to be great, then you got to go be great. And, and so we can't play teams who we think that, oh, it's an easy win. We got to go out and we got to challenge ourselves um, week in and week out. And that was kind of something that I picked up from my high school coach, uh, you know, for our homecoming game. He normally picked up whatever best available team that was out there. You know, I think the lowest ranked opponent that we played in the state when I was in high school was the 15th ranked team in the state for homecoming. And so, you know, it, you know, guys got to be ready. And so in order for us to be great again, we got to step up to the challenge. Well, and that's one thing I've seen throughout with the, the success as Van Horn Athletics has gotten better the last few years is all your teams have stepped up and played played better teams and it's really uh, it's a it's a culture that's building at Van Horn and, and there's just a lot of success I went to a playoff basketball game this year and and watched that and uh it, there's a there's definitely a different vibe around Van Horn the last few years well one of the things that I tell my players the standard is the standard uh we don't waver from that and and you know uh it catches like a wildfire and you know no pun intended but you know, if you keep your standard to standard and across the board, if your standard is to standard, uh, in, in order to be a part of this, um, we won't waver on what our standards are and, and kids buy into that. And, and I think that's one of the biggest thing and one of the things that uh, every coach across the board kind of done, you know, you get the buy in from the kids and um, it, it, it helps out across the board, especially every program. Um, football starts the school year. Um, so for me, that set the standard uh, for every other sport. You know, uh, if we're being successful, I think every other sport would want to match that or be better than that. So, you know, they go out and, and their standard is their standard. Well, Coach, uh, thanks a lot for taking time with us. Good luck. And we'll be talking again soon. Thank you. See you soon.